Hello everyone, this is Paul with another SQL Skills Insider demo video. This one is for November 2011. In this video, what I wanted to show you is one of the cool things you can do with extended events. Extended events is um, one of the things that Jonathan is an expert on, and, and he wrote this demo, which I've altered a little bit. And what it does is it shows one of the targets that you can use to consume extended events when they fire. This one's using what's called the pair matching target, which, as its name suggests, allows you to match pairs of events and they cancel each other out. At the end of the event session, only the, the events that didn't have a match are still left. Has a variety of uses, and the one that I'm going to show you here is if you're, if you're finding that you've got code that is timing out and you want to figure out at what point in your, say, nested stored procedures the timeout's actually occurring, this will allow you to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of stored procedures. Obviously, this is a very contrived example. So I've got uh, an outer stored procedure, which takes a time that it's going to wait for and passes that time into an inner stored procedure. The inner stored procedure just goes ahead and waits for that amount of time. Very, very simple. So I'm going to go ahead and create those two stored procedures. And then I'm going to create my event session. So the event session that I'm going to use is looking at the SP statement starting and SP statement completed events. And those are what I'm going to do my pair matching on. So I'm looking to see when in my nested stack of, of stored procedures, whether there's a point where I time out and one of the stored procedures deep somewhere deep in the stack um, didn't have any, any matching events for completing. And then I can go and investigate and figure out what inside that stored procedure is actually causing problems. So I'm grabbing a bunch of different actions. I want to know uh, who was executing. I want to see the T-SQL stack I want, and what was being executed and so on. And I'm going to pair match. And the pair match is going to match on the session ID so that I don't get stored procedures being executed by different sessions cancelling each other out and also the T-SQL stack so I can make sure that I'm matching at the right point in my T-SQL stack. So I'm going to go ahead and create this event session. And then I'm going to start it up. Now, to be able to force a, a timeout, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the connection properties here. And the connection properties I'm going to change so that my execution timeout is 10 seconds. Pretty small. So now I've connected up. I'm going to start up my event session. Oh, I'd already started that. And then I'm going to do something. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into MSDB and I'm going to run the stored procedure, the outer stored procedure, 10 times. Now the default value for the duration is only half a second. So that's not going to cause me to time out. So I'm going to do 10 of those. And then I'm going to say run the stored procedure with a 30 second value for the wait for. That's obviously going to cause the timeout. And then do another 10 that shouldn't time out. Just to demonstrate, these ones are just to demonstrate that they don't get picked up by the pair matching event session that I've got. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll look at the messages. So we'll count up to 10. As soon as this counter down here hits 10 seconds, we should see that our timeout occurs, like so. And then the, uh, the 10 with half a second ran perfectly well. Okay, so now let's go ahead and change my timeout back again. Oops. Like so so that I don't have weird problems that bug me for the rest of the day. And then I'm going to not turn off that event session, because if I turn it off, my pair matching target will disappear. But I'm going to stop it from capturing any more events. So let's have a look and see what happened in our event session. So as, as with usual, when you're trying to pull stuff out of extended events, you've got to use xQuery, which is it can be kind of steep learning curve, but once you've done it a few times, you'll get used to it. So I'm pulling out down in this code here that I'm that I'm mousing over. I'm pulling out my uh, everything from the the target from my particular event session because I might have other event sessions defined. And I pull all that stuff out, format it nicely, and I find that I have some unmatched events. So what happened was I got uh, two SP starting events that didn't have statement ending events. It tells me what time it happened, the session, what database ID I was in gives me a query plan handle so I could go and use dmexec query plan to get the graphical query plan back. It gives me where I was in my T-SQL stack. It tells me what I was actually doing. 
and I've got causality tracking on so I can see that um, these events were linked together. So with this, I could go in and if we look back here, one thing I didn't mention is this, the SP nesting level. So obviously this is the outer SP, this is the inner SP, so this is the one that timed out. So I could go and have a look and see what caused the timeout. So pretty cool stuff. And lots and lots of practical uses for that if you're trying to debug what's going on with uh, client query timeouts. Anyway, a pretty uh, quick demo video for, for you this time. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned some stuff. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching and thanks for being a SQL Skills Insider.